Okay, so this next section is going to also be on solving triangles. This is using a different formula that is called the law of cosines. Now the law of sines, as we discovered last time, is something that you can use to solve a triangle when you either have two sides in an angle or two angles in a side, but you have to have a pair where you have an angle and its corresponding side length. The law of cosines is a formula that we can use if we do not have that pair. So if we have an angle but do not have the opposing side length, or if we have a side length but not the opposing angle. So for a generic triangle, so A, B, and C with side lengths A, B, and C, the formula that we have for the log cosines is written three different times here depending on what you're solving for. So go ahead and write these down. If you need to pause the video at this point to get them all written down, that's fine. But essentially all you need to know is the side length on the left side has to match the angle that you have on the right side, okay? Everything else that you have are side lengths. So for the first one that we have, we have a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times the cosine of a. So side a matches angle a, and then here, the values that we have are just the other two side lines. So you take your other two sides, you square them and add them together, subtract two times those side lines multiplied by the cosine of the angle. So then similarly for the next one, we want side b. Over here we have angle b, then the other side lengths that we have are A and C. Finally, the last one, same thing, C, C. The other ones that we have are A and B. So if you have one of those corresponding pairs, you do not need to use the log cosines, you can just use the log sines. So looking at the first example we have, instead of drawing out the triangle, they just write out the values. So we have side A is 15, side C is 25, angle C is 101. So we have that pair where we have an angle and its corresponding side length. So that means for this one, we're just going to use the law of sines, just like what we did in the first lesson. So to set this up, since we have C and C, that's the pair that we're going to start with. So we're going to do 25 over the sine of 101. Now we have side A, so that goes on the top. That means that we have to solve for angle A. So sine of A goes on the bottom. Now from here, cross multiply. So we have 15 times sine of 101 equals 25 times sine of A. Divide over the 25. Equals sine of A. And then our final step to get A by itself, since A is stuck inside of the sine, we have to get rid of the sine by taking sine inverse. And that gets rid of sine here. So in the calculator, we do the sine inverse of 15 sine of 101 over 25, and we get that angle A is 36.08. Now that we have two angles, C and A, we can now solve for B. We're going to add these two together and subtract that from 180. So if we add the two together, that gives us 137.08, subtract that from 180, and we get that angle B is going to be 42.92 degrees. So now we have all three angles and we have two sides. So the last side that we need to solve for, since we have A and C, we need to solve for side B. So I'm going to start with this fraction since that was the first fraction that we had in the problem. So 25 over the sine of 101. Since we want B, we have to use side length B, or uh, sorry, angle B. So equals B, over the sine of 42.92. Now we cross multiply. So we get, I'll do this up here, 25 sine of 42.92 equals B times the sine of 101. Finally, divide the sine of 101 to the other side, and we get that B is equal to 17.34. So we now have the missing sides and the missing angles, okay? So I hope that this first one made sense. This one just ended up being a review of the law of sides. Okay, so for this next example, so we have this triangle up here, triangle ABC. We know that angle A is 20 degrees. Side length C, since that's opposite angle C, is equal to eight. And then side B, since it's opposite angle B, is equal to 10. So this time the angle that we have, we do not have the corresponding side length, which would be side length A. 
So this is what tells us that we have to use the log cosines. Now you should have the three different versions of the formula that's written. Since we have angle A and we want to solve for side length A, that means we need to use the top formula that we see, the one that has the A squared and then the cosine of A, since that is the pair that we need. So on the left side of the equal sign, we're going to have A squared, and then on the very far right side, we're going to end up with the cosine of A, which is 20. So now we need to fill in the other values. So after the equal sign, we have, since we have A squared here, we need B squared plus C squared. So B is 10, so 10 squared plus C squared, so 8 squared. And then the next part, we have minus 2 times these same two side lengths again, so 2 times 10 times 8. And that whole thing is being multiplied by the cosine of 20. Okay? So now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to use the calculator to simplify. So this part here goes into the calculator just like you see it. You're going to do 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 parentheses 10 parentheses 8 times cosine of 20. You plug that whole thing into the calculator and that should give you 13.65 approximately. So now to get A by itself, we're going to take the square root of both sides and we plug that into the calculator and we get that A is approximately equal to 3.69. So now we have all three sides. Now we have one angle measurement, so we just need to solve for one other angle and then we'll be done because the third one will be easy to solve for. So from here, it doesn't really matter which angle we solve for first, so I'll just do alphabetical. We have side length B, we need angle B, so that means that we're using the second version of the formula, the one that has b squared on one side, cosine of b on the other side. So I'm going to do this one up here. So we start with b squared, which is 10 squared, equals, now since we're using b, the next two values that we have have to be the other two sides. So we're going to do a squared plus c squared. So 3.69 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times those same two side lengths again. So 2 times 3.69 times 8, I'm running out of room, times the cosine of the angle, which we do not know what the angle is, is so I'm just going to write cosine of B. Now these ones are a little bit more obnoxious. We're still going to be using the calculator, but we have to kind of break this up into pieces because ultimately we need to solve for cosine of B. Now we could just take our values and move them over to the other side, but then we'll have a lot of squares and a lot of other things that we have to deal with. So we're going to use the calculator to help us to do this. Now we're going to break this up into pieces. The first part that we're going to do in the calculator is going to be the left side squared. So 10 squared, which gives us 100. The next part that we're going to do in the calculator is just going to be this part. So the two values that we have squared and added together. So in the calculator, you're going to do 3.69 squared plus 8 squared, and that is going to give us 77.6161. Then we bring down the minus sign. Now the third part that goes into the calculator are the numbers in front of the cosine. So we're going to do 2 times 3.69 times 8, which that is going to give us 59.04 times cosine of B. So now we still have the same equation, we just kind of cleaned up the numbers a little bit. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the number that is not next to the cosine and we're going to subtract it over. Now the biggest mistake that I see with these is people try to combine these two numbers together since they're right next to each other. But this number is being multiplied to the cosine of b. So it's kind of like if it has an x or something like that after, we cannot combine those because they're not like terms. So we're going to subtract over the 77.6161. So if we do 100 minus 77.6161, we get 22.3839. So this will equal negative, since we have the minus sign, 59.04 cosine of B.
Now we take the number in front of the cosine of b and we're going to divide it to the other side. Now we could divide this in the calculator, but for right now I'm just going to leave it as that fraction. So we have cosine of b is equal to 22.3839 divided by negative 59.04. So now we need to get rid of the cosine. We're going to do that by taking cosine inverse of both sides. So we'll do in the calculator cosine inverse of this fraction that we see here. So if we punch that into the calculator, we should get that b is equal to 112.28 degrees. So now we have all three sides and we have two out of the three angles. So now the last angle is going to be easy to solve for. We're just going to add together the two that we have, subtract that from 180. So if we do 20 plus 112.28, that gives us 132.28. Then we subtract that from 180, and we get that our final angle, which is angle C, is equal to 47.72 degrees. So now we have solved for the value, okay? So if we're solving for a side length, these ones are the easiest to plug into the calculator because you can just plug all of this in one step and then take the square root. The ones where you have to solve for the angle, those ones are a little bit trickier, but the calculator still does all the work. So you'll do the left side squared in the calculator, the next two in the calculator, the next part in the calculator, and then after that, we just combine like terms, solve for cosine of your angle, take cosine inverse to get the angle by itself, okay? So I hope that this example made sense. Okay, so in this next example, we're going to see another type of triangle that we can solve by using the law of cosines. In the previous one, we had two sides and an angle, we just didn't have the corresponding side and angle. This example that we see here, we have a total of three sides with no angle measurements at all. This is the other type of problem that we can use the law of cosines with. So we have all three sides, we need to solve for the angles. Now, in order to do this, this is going to be like the second part that we did of the last problem where we had to split it up into pieces. <clears throat> now, by itself, theoretically, we would have to do that two separate times in this triangle in order to solve it. But for this one, I'm going to show you kind of a shortcut that we can use, so we only have to use that once. We're going to start by using the law of cosines, but we're going to solve for the biggest angle first. The biggest angle is the angle that is opposite the biggest side length. So the biggest side length that we have is the 16. That is opposite of angle B. So we're going to start by solving for angle B. So that means we're using that second version of the formula with the B squared cosine of B. So B squared, which is 16 squared, equals our other two sides squared and added together. So 12 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times the same two sides again, times the cosine of the angle, which once again was b. Now we plug this into the calculator one step at a time. So first we do the 16 squared, which is 256. Then we do 12 squared plus 9 squared, which gives us 225. Then we do 2 times 12 times 9, which gives us 216 times cosine of b. Now we subtract over the 225. So if we subtract these two, we get 31 equals negative 216 cosine of b. So then we divide over the negative 216. So we have cosine of b is equal to 31 over negative 216. So now to get b by itself, this is where we do the cosine inverse of both sides. So b will equal the cosine inverse of 31 over negative 216, which when we plug that into the calculator, we are going to get that angle b is equal to 98.25 degrees. Okay? Now, if we solve for the biggest side for, I'm sorry, the biggest angle first. At this point to finish solving this, we can switch over to the law of sines because the law of sines is a little bit quicker and easier. But in order to do this, you had to start by solving for the biggest angle first. 
if we don't, if we solve for one of the other ones, it creates what's called an ambiguous case with the triangles where you could actually have two different triangles that work, okay, as far as the math goes. Now we know that there's only one actual triangle that works, so if we solve for the biggest angle first, we avoid that ambiguous case. So if you do that first, then we can switch over to the law of sines. Otherwise, at this point, we would do the law of cosines again, so basically the same as what we did here to solve for either one of the other two sides, or the other two angles, and then we add those two together, subtract from 180. But for this one, to show you how we do this more simply and more quickly, I'm going to switch over to the law of sines. So at this point, it doesn't matter which one we solve for next, so I'm just going to do alphabetical. We want angle A, so we have to use side length A, which is 12. We have angle B and side length B. Now, angle B is one that we calculated, so we try not to use that if possible, but we don't have any other angles, so we don't really have an option here. So we're going to do 16 over the sine of B, which was 98.25, equals A, which is 12, over the sine of angle A. Then we cross multiply, so we get 12 times the sine of 98.25 equals 16 sine of A. Divide the 16 to the other side. So we have sine A is 12 sine of 98.25 over 16. And then our final step, we do sine inverse in the calculator to get 12 sine of 98.25 over 16. That goes into the calculator and we get that angle A is 47.92 degrees. So now to solve for angle C, we have two out of the three angles. So we're going to add together these two that we already got and then we'll just do 180 minus whatever that value is in which case we get C is equal to 33.83 degrees. So now we have all three sides and all three angles. Now coming back to this part for a second, we would have gotten the exact same angle measurement if we had gone through the law of cosines again. Since we were solving for angle A, we would have had to have started with side length A. So we would have done 12 squares equals the other two sides squared and added together. So we would have had 12 squared equals 9 squared plus 16 squared minus 2 times 9 times 16 multiplied by the cosine of A. We would have gone through, gotten cosine of A by itself, taken the cosine inverse, we would have gotten the same angle that we got here. Okay? So if you want to do that for the sake of consistency, you can. But as long as you remember with the law of cosines, if you're solving for the biggest angle first, for the next one, you can switch over to the law of sines if that's easier for you. Okay, so I hope that this made sense. Okay, so for this last part, I'm not actually going to go through and solve these triangles, but we're just going to talk about how we look at a triangle and figure out which formula we need to use because sometimes it can, it can kind of be tricky. When you look at the triangle, regardless of if you have sides or angles or whatever combination you have, if you have an angle measurement, look and see the side lengths that are opposite the angle. If we just have one angle like this, we do not have the side length that's opposite of that angle measurement, so we do not have that corresponding pair. Because we do not have that corresponding pair, in order to solve, we would have to use cosines for this one. Okay, And like I said, it doesn't matter if you have two sides and an angle, or if you just have all three sides, if you do not have an angle side length pair, you have to use cosines. For this one, we have two angles, so we do have that pair where we have the um, angle and the side length. So because we have that pair, that tells us that this one, we can solve the sides. Okay, now let's say just for the sake of argument for this one, I'm going to erase the 25 and I'm going to put it down here. Okay. So now we no longer have that corresponding side and angle pair. We don't have the side opposite the 34. We do not have the side that's opposite the 30. However, for this one, because we have two angle measurements, that means that we could solve for the third angle. If we take these two and add them together, that gives us 64 degrees. If we take 180 and minus 64, that gives us 116. 
So now we have that corresponding angle and side length pair, okay? So if you have the pair, that means that you use the law of sines. If you do not have the pair, but if you have two angles, you can still use the law of sides. So that is the difference between the two, okay? So I hope that this made sense. If you do have questions on your homework, please feel free to reach out. I will try to help you the best that I can.